hard-boiled eggs boil down to two big problems, peeling and doneness. Today we're going to solve them and make a really good egg salad. Let's start with peeling. That's the easy problem to solve. The most important thing about peeling is your technique. Before you start peeling, you need to gently tap your egg on some hard surface to create a ton of tiny little shards of shell. The more broken up the shell, the easier it will come off. Start in the dull part of the egg because it has a little pocket of air that makes it very easy to get not only under the shell, but under that thin membrane that glues the shell to the egg. Make sure you are either peeling completely submerged in water or under a thin stream of water. Dry eggs are impossible to peel. If the egg isn't peeling well, Take a thin spoon and wiggle it under the membrane to help you get started. You should do this underwater, but it was hard for me to film it underwater. Not all spoons work well for this. Some are too thick, but you can always buy a cheap little peeling device on Amazon if you need one. The second most important thing to make peeling easy is giving your eggs a thermal shock in the beginning and the end of cooking. Starting in simmering water works. And steaming your eggs also works, but starting in cold water and gradually bringing it to a simmer makes the eggs hard to peel, so don't do that. It's also important to shock your eggs in cold water as soon as they are done. It doesn't need to be ice water. Cold tap water works fine. This way I can get the whole process done in one pot without getting out another bowl. I dump the hot water, fill the pot with cold water, then dump it again and fill it with cold water one more time. This works fine for up to six eggs, but if you're cooking a ton of eggs, this might not cool them quickly enough since it takes a long time to fill a large pot with water. So using a separate large bowl of cold water is a good idea for more than six eggs. You probably heard that fresh eggs don't peel well. It depends on how fresh. If you own a chicken who lays eggs, you might want to wait a week. But if you buy eggs at a supermarket, you don't really need to worry about freshness. Trust me, these eggs weren't laid the day you bought them. Here are some I only bought yesterday, and they're peeling just fine. Now let's talk about doneness. That's a much more difficult problem than peeling. The way most people solve it is by accepting a whole range of doneness levels as good. Most people agree that if the yolk has a green membrane around it, that's overdone. If the yolk is liquid, that's underdone. But anything in between is fine. Even serious culinary publications like seriouses.com are okay with pale yellow yolks. I wish I was okay with it, but I'm not. I want my yolks to be bright yellow and the texture of butter. I am okay with a tiny bit of pale yellow around the edges, but once most of the yolk is pale, it tastes dry to me. Unfortunately, that gives me a very narrow window of opportunity to catch that perfect moment, which is difficult because you can't look inside the egg. This is when a myriad of factors come into play that people don't like to think about. Are you starting with room temperature or fridge temperature eggs? How much water are you using? How many eggs are you cooking? What is the exact size of the eggs? What is the exact temperature of the water? And are you chilling the eggs in ice water or in cold tap water? My biggest pet peeve with pretty much everyone's recipes is that they don't warn you that the size listed on the package is meaningless. Both of these eggs are from the same brand and both are labeled large. You can probably see with the naked eye that the size is all over the place. This one is 54 grams and this one is 70 grams. The first one is slightly smaller than an average large and the second one is slightly smaller than an average jumbo. Just because two eggs come from the same box doesn't mean they'll need the same timing. At some point in the American history, no food writer dared to give the flour measurement in grams. And look at us now. Maybe one day giving the cooking time based on the egg weight will be considered thoughtful and helpful instead of 
absolutely nuts. <laughs> and you really don't have to weigh every egg. You'll have a hard boil in your life. After a while, you'll be able to eyeball them. Now that you know that there is a method to my madness, here's my egg cooking procedure. My eggs start at fridge temperature because I live in the US. If you live in Europe and keep your eggs at room temperature, you'll need a shorter cooking time. For one to six eggs, I use two quarts of water. For seven to 12 eggs, I use four quarts. Basically, I want to have enough water so that its temperature doesn't drop too much when I add the cold eggs. Using too little water wreaks havoc on your timing. So don't do that. Bring the water to a very active simmer, but not a rolling boil. Gently lower your eggs. A spider spoon works well for this. These are my larger eggs, so I want to give them a minute of cooking before adding the smaller size. If you want to increase the chance that your yolks will come out centered, stir the pot gently in one direction for about a minute. During the first three minutes, keep the heat up to return the water to a very active simmer as quickly as possible. Now let's add the smaller eggs. If you don't have a spider, tongues work well as long as you're cooking just a few eggs. After a minute, reverse the direction of stirring and stir one more minute. Centering the yolks is completely optional. And this method doesn't need to be precise. Basically, just keep things moving and try to create a bit of a slow spinning motion. It's only useful for the first couple of minutes. Once the white starts to set, repositioning the yolks won't work. The reason I do it is because I don't like overcooked yolks. If a yolk ends up too close to the outside, sometimes you can almost see them through the white when peeling the eggs, it ends up overcooking. Since I have to watch the heat very carefully during the first three minutes of cooking anyway, I might as well stir the pot. After the first three minutes of cooking for larger eggs or two minutes for smaller eggs, I cover the pot and take it off the burner. Let it sit for exactly eight minutes. Drain, fill the pot with cold water, dump it, fill it with cold water again, cool for five minutes and peel. Since the cooking time is a bit confusing, let me go over it in detail. Here's the duration of the active simmer based on the egg size. Both of these are typical large eggs. After this time is up, I cover the pot, take it off the heat and let the egg sit for eight minutes. During this time, the water temperature will be roughly 200 Fahrenheit, which results in a tastier, less rubbery white than a summer during the whole cooking time. If you prefer to steam your eggs, it's basically the sum of my simmer and rest times. Keep in mind that these are the steaming times for a normal pot. If you're using an instant pot or some other appliance, you'll need to play with timing. Although steaming can produce excellent eggs, there are a few advantages to cooking covered in water. You can add the small eggs later and you can stir the pot to center the yolks. If you are new to this method, I would simplify your life the first few times and stick to one egg size so that you don't get confused. And if you don't want to stir, well, don't. It's really not a biggie. I find that hard boiled eggs taste way, way better at room temperature than straight from the fridge. So if I cook them ahead of time, I store them peeled in an airtight container and warm them in the hot water, about 130 degrees, that's about the temperature of hot tap water, for 20 minutes before serving. Now that we have perfect hard boiled eggs, let's make a salad. Add some mayo, crumb fresh or sour cream, Dijon mustard, scallions, chives, parsley, and dill, or whatever herbs you want to use. A little black pepper and salt and mix it all up. This is the part of the recipe where there is absolutely no need to measure anything. Just taste and adjust. To tell you the truth, my favorite egg salad is this deconstructed one with all the dressing underneath and slices of egg on top. I hope you can use these strategies to create your own bulletproof way to hard boiled eggs. Remember that the important thing is not what to do, but why. Here are more thought provoking culinary tutorials for you to check out and a link to my online classes is in the description below.